Hey everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. The documentary on Amazon Prime, Shiny Happy People, has been the subject of a couple of videos on this channel. This will be the last one dedicated specifically to that. I've taken episode three and episode four and sort of put them together in this video, as well as a response to the responses by some Christian influencers to said documentary. So let's get into it. Episode three and four are largely about the younger generation, the next generation, the ones who all of this is supposedly for, right? The ones that Jim Bob Duggar was trying to make a better life for and the ones that Bob Gotham was trying to help train up and there's a lot of words thrown around scary sounding words like militia and the Joshua generation and but there are still some big topics that need to be dissected a little bit very very clearly in the beginning of episode three we see where the lack of value that's placed in women is playing out in the lives of the women attached to the Duggar family. Jill shares with the audience that she went seven and a half years of her adult life without getting paid a single time. During that time she had a baby and got married. On her wedding day she shares that her dad kind of like slid a piece of paper to her. She's running through the kitchen trying to get ready for her wedding and says here you need to sign this so she signed it. What she was doing was committing to five more years of filming on the show. Without any conversation, without any actual consent, this is where she found herself. So we also got this issue where during that time she has a baby and they say, well, you've signed a contract, you have to film the birth. She never gave her consent to film the birth. And so in a negotiation, they gave her the option of taking the cameras and tripods and filming themselves. So now they've been given an assignment during the birth of their child, when all the focus should be on each other, on the human that is coming into the world. Then they went to TLC to try to just get some sort of income from it, from all of that work. They just said, hey, can you pay our copay for the hospital stay? And TLC said, no, we've already paid your dad, go deal with him. You've got these people who are making decisions for the family because they're the head of the family. So they're taking in those finances, they're taking in that money, and they are keeping it for the family, despite the fact that it was very much dependent on these adult children, these adult daughters who are married and having children and all of these other things that you do in life when you move on from your parents house and they weren't seeing anything for their labor. There's a lot in these two episodes about conservative Christianity and politics and fundamentalism and what that looks like and there's lots of interviews about the series of people who came out of fundamentalism and they've got interviews with a couple deconstructing former fundamentalist creators and they've got some interviews, no, they've got one interview with a Christian creator couple. And this is where I want to make sure that we're being very clear. I do these videos as education, um, sometimes entertainment. We call it psychoeducation in therapy. We teach some basic things to people that they might not have access to otherwise. We help to normalize things that are happening out there. We're not speaking to any one specific person or taking somebody in an informed consent. We're not being a therapist on the camera. But I am a therapist and I want to make sure that when I talk about people who are real people and not a character that they play on screen. I want to be very clear about what I'm saying and what I'm not saying about people. There was a lot of talk about how this younger generation, this Joshua generation, is expected to sort of infiltrate politics in every area out there so that the perspective of the Christian fundamentalist movement can be informed in everything that society does, right? They want to help making laws, they want to push certain things through, and that's kind of scary given where some of our laws and some of our courts have gone recently. I don't think any of us could say they're not succeeding in some areas. And they said some scary stuff, and we went over this last week, and if you want to see my whole diatribe about it, you can go ahead and watch last week's video, but the crux of what I said was that People in the conservative Christian movement want to know why all of their people keep getting called out for affairs or doing really, really unethical things. And the reason is because who is attracted to a religion that calls the father figure of a family to have no actual authority over him, except for other people who are also doing the same thing? Who is attracted to a family style where ultimately no one gets a word over you and you don't ever have to listen to anyone else or take anybody else into account? You don't have to. You should, and they do talk about that, and I will give that, but you don't have to. Who's attracted to that? Those are predators. This idea, this like left-wing movement is out there to capture and to fool and to trap these conservative Christians is actually so very off base. It's the people who have this inflated sense of authority and inflated sense of right that they are able to use and discard other people. 
Now let's go to the couple that they used as a demonstration of Christian influencers. Recently on their channel, they published a video. They titled it, they lied to us. And they were all up in arms about how the people at Amazon Prime lied to them. And so they wanted to make it a 360 view. And it was just a one dimensional view on how crazy all these Christians are and blah, blah, blah. And they used them as this like example. And they said they lied to them. I'm not advocating for anyone to actually watch the video. If you want to feel free. There were some parts of it that were highly disturbing to me when I watched them because I am very aware, as I'm sure you are also, that there's this judgmental tone out there about the word deconstruction. And the interesting thing to me is the wife in this video is saying disentangle from the bad things and like keep the good things. And she says, I'm not saying deconstruct, I'm saying disentangle. And I'm looking at the screen like you're saying the same thing. People who deconstruct their faith, it doesn't mean that they set their faith on fire and walk away. Some people do, rightfully so. Not everybody does. Deconstructing means you're taking this monument that you built with the advising of other people around you, taking it apart and figuring out what to do with the parts. I went to this restaurant one time and I had a deconstructed eclair for dessert. Do you know what my deconstructed eclair was? It was pastry, it was cream, and it was chocolate. It still had all the parts, it just looked different than it did when you think of eclair, okay? That's deconstruction. The concept that deconstruction is this terrible thing that people do was so obvious in this couple's video that it was hard to watch. It was also hard to watch them saying things like they used all these people who have left the faith and are struggling in their lives. The husband said this at least three times. These people are struggling in their lives. I got riled up a couple times, had to stop it, had to go back to it. I'm watching this person take all of these things that I was told as a child and as a teenager and as a young adult and all the things that I'm sure some of you were told, like all the people who don't have Jesus in their lives are so sad. They have no hope. And our job as Christians is to bring the hope to them so that they can be happy. I left my church job in 2020 and went to a job in public schools. In my job in the public schools, I found more care more happiness, more kindness, and less selfishness than I did at any point in any church job I worked in. There is something that happens inside of people when their expectation is they have to keep on this happy, successful, everything is great shield in their lives. There can be a bitterness that comes through. And I'm watching this video and I'm, I'm seeing what I'm interpreting as this anger at being misunderstood. And I get it, people want to be understood, right? The problem is when Christians come at people who do not believe what they believe and expect them to just believe it without ever approaching the person you're talking to to find out their story. And this is where this whole thing really became problematic for me to watch because they were so disregarding of the validity of the stories of the people who had deconstructed, the validity of the stories of some of these other people who have lived these lives and are explaining it to people who don't know anything about the IBLP or maybe anything about Christianity in general. They kept talking over and over and over again in this video about how they didn't take the people who were in the middle. They took these people who are all the way over to the left and completely don't want anything to do with Christianity and the people all the way over to the right, like Bill Gothard, and they didn't take anybody in the middle besides them and they made them seem like they're over here, okay? and I. I don't necessarily disagree. I think the piece they're missing though, I think the piece they're missing, I think the piece that a lot of Christians who see this are missing, is that's what you look like to the rest of the world. Whether you consider yourself as radical as over here or not, the rest of the world doesn't see you that way. They do see you as radical. They do see you as the people over here. And they see that because they hear the words that come out of your mouth. When you say things in your videos like, Yes, I do have a problem with the LGBTQ. The LGBTQ is not a thing. Okay, it's not a thing. The LGBTQ is a phrase that is intentionally put out there as a dog whistle to offend. And when you call people out on that, they say, oh, I didn't know. I don't know what to call you. You add a letter every other day. 
they also use phrases like the LGBTQ agenda. And it was super interesting because in the same breath that they're talking about how they were not considered and the other hundreds of millions of Christians that are kind of in the middle and not living this radically and not harming other people in the way they're living their lives, they weren't considered. And then talk about how the LGBTQ are trying to steal our children's innocence and trying to sexualize our children. And I don't understand in any way how in the same breath as an adult human, you can say, you have to leave room for people in the middle. Also, these people are all this way. Why don't you have to leave room for people in the middle? Why does that rule not apply to you? Because it certainly sounds like it doesn't. This show, Shiny Happy People, the most dramatic stories about people who've been harmed by this fundamentalist perspective. All of you watching this have shared with me at different times your story about being impacted by conservative Christianity, which we don't even need to start, honestly, on the splitting of hairs that separates the two. Because as I've said before, I don't actually care. If your church is conservative, but you still love everybody, you just don't let people get married. Oh, there you are. There you are. You're not different then. And I don't care if you are. The system that has allowed people to be oppressed and abused in huge ways and has been given a blanket go ahead because they're the church is the problem. I live in Florida. What is happening in Florida is aggressively destructive to people. And it's all under the guise of keeping children safe. So for instance, you can't take kids to drag shows because that is not safe for kids. But you can take kids to church. All of these denominations, there's not a single Christian denomination that's gotten away from this where people in charge have abused their power and abused the people underneath them and harmed people, harmed children. But we do not come at them as hard as we come at the queer community. Why? I'm still waiting for an answer as to why. Because you cannot tell me that you think the queer community are a bunch of people who are gonna harm children and not come at the people who are actually harming children over here. This whole thing was a mess. And I know for a lot of you, it has been very triggering. And I know for a lot of you, it's left you with a lot to think about. I would love for you to comment below other things that have maybe come up for you through watching this or these conversations. I would love to do some more videos on topical things with religious deconstruction and religious trauma. That's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all next time. And until then, take care of yourselves and each other.